Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the November 12th edition of Carolina Week. I'm Marissa May. I'll tell you why knowing how to dispose of your prescription drugs should be a high priority. Reporter Katie Miller brings us the compelling post-war story of a UNC veteran. In sports, Carolina's field hockey domination continues in the NCAA tournament. Weathercaster Mallory Nichols will tell us whether you'll need a hat and scarf this week. All that and a one-two punch. Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. Hello and welcome to the Monday edition of Carolina Week. I'm Carla Babb. And I'm Adam Rue. Thank you for joining us. Earlier this semester, we told you about the prevalence of ADD and ADHD drug abuse among college students. Our Marissa May joins us from the newsroom. And Marissa, we're now hearing reports about other prescription drug abuse. Adam, officials say prescription drug abuse is a big issue. And the government is taking a new step to stop it. Junior Ashley Oxendine is no stranger to prescription drugs. Because of many athletic injuries, Oxendine has been prescribed painkillers, anti-inflammatories, and muscle relaxers. According to UNC pharmacist Fran Whaley, many students abuse such prescriptions. In the student population, the most common things that we see, number one, are um, strong pain relievers like Percocet. The White House Office of National Drug Control Policy identified the illegal use of pharmaceuticals as one of the fastest growing forms of drug abuse. Oxendine is aware that her painkillers are commonly sought after by those looking for a quick high. I have to make sure I keep them out of risk of other students and people walking to my house. So I put them in pill containers so that no one really knows that they're painkillers. Statistics from the Drug Abuse Warning Network show that painkillers are a category of drug showing a steady abuse increase associated with age from 2002 to 2004. But the United States Department of Health and Human Services is hoping a new pilot program will help lower these numbers. Pharmacies across the country are handing out pamphlets to patients who are prescribed highly abused drugs. These pamphlets list ways to properly dispose of extra medication and how to responsibly store your medicine to ensure it stays in the right hands. Suggestions include disposing of medicine in kitty litter, coffee grinds, or other undesirable substances. Flushing your medicine isn't a good idea. Recent studies have shown an increase in antibiotics and medications in our water. This program will run for 26 weeks. After that, officials will decide whether to continue it. So, Marissa, we know prescription drug abuse is increasing. What about non-prescription medicines? Whaley told me OTC, or over-the-counter medication, such as Sudafed, is also an issue. In order to buy this medicine, you have to be older than 18, show a government-issued photo ID, and you're limited in the amount you can purchase. Marissa May starting us off tonight. Thanks. A woman jumped to her death early this morning from a UNC parking deck. The 47-year-old from Carborough jumped off Cardinal Parking Deck across from UNC Hospitals at about 3 a.m. Police haven't released a name, but they say the woman didn't have any known affiliation with UNC. We are now in the midst of the worst drought ever recorded in North Carolina. The National Weather Service says we need 25 to 30 inches of rain to alleviate the drought. To help conserve Raleigh's decreasing water supply, city officials are working on a plan to pump water from Lake Benson and Lake Wheeler into Falls Lake. Central North Carolina received two to five inches of rain last, night, last month, and boy did we need it, but Falls Lake rose less than a foot, and Jordan Lake only rose between two and three feet. Forecasters predict we'll face water shortages through next summer. Because of the area's severe water problems, UNC and my undergrad alma mater, NC State, have extended the rivalry beyond athletics. NC State Chancellor James Oblinger has challenged Chancellor James Meeser to a water conservation competition. The campus that reduces water usage in residence halls the most will win. The challenge began Saturday and will end on February 20th when the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack play in men's basketball. There's no actual prize for winning, just the joy of beating a rival. Today is the observance of Veterans Day and the men and women who serve our country received a special honor Friday from Carolina's ROTC. It was the annual Veterans Day ceremony at UNC. General Margaret Wilmoth addressed the cadets and veterans. 
those attending honored troops who have served or are serving the U.S. for their dedication and bravery. The ceremony concluded with the changing of the guard. Army ROTC Company Commander Adam Kennedy says it's a special day. Honor all the veterans from any of the uh, conflicts that we've had in the past. Um, it, it takes a lot, a lot of courage, a lot, and there's a lot of honor involved in it. So uh, we just want to kind of say thank you to all of the veterans. One of the honored veterans at UNC is Naval Pilot Lieutenant Brian Lubitz. He fought in Iraq, contributed to tsunami relief, and raised a family. Reporter Katie Miller shows us how a military lifestyle affects his loved ones. The only way you make it through deployment is you kind of shut down emotionally. I mean, you have to, otherwise you, you're going to go crazy. Because the person you love the most and you care about the most is so far away. We got pregnant well knowing that he was going to be gone. The waiting game is hard, and they're not in the waiting game. They're in the go mode. They're in the um, very focused, um, don't, they, don't, they don't have much time to reflect back on family. It's one thing because we all know somebody that's, that's been lost in combat, somebody that's died. I spent six months in Japan and we had the tsunami, which was, the dynamics were so different from going to a combat mm -hmm. environment where you're getting shot at and, and doing, you know, really taking care of people in one capacity, then going over to Japan and, and dealing with the tsunami. But that homecoming was, uh, was, that was awesome. Fun. That, that was fun. Because we had Ella. I mean, so, so he, and she didn't, I was worried she wasn't going to know him because she's 15 months, you know, and they're so impressionable with other people at that point in their life. But, um, yeah, I kept him around the house and videos and, and, and you put pictures up pictures all, over the, all over like the low part of the wall so she could see level. them. Yeah. And it worked. It's not tough because of the job. It's tough because of the, the separation. And I don't want to leave her and I don't want to leave the kids. But I also know there's a there's a bigger cause. There's there's something we're we're fighting for, and there's something we're protecting. And uh, we both know that, and we know that the kids will understand that at some point. Lieutenant Lubitz might return to Iraq within the next month. The arts and hotly debated social topics don't often mix. Coming up, we'll show you how some are conducting a discussion about the death penalty using dancing, singing, and dialogue.